Okay, hello guys. I'm back again with another short video today. Uh, a while ago I made a video about the UV5RM Plus GPS, which I'm not quite sure yet, but I have to say that from all the reports that we have, it's quite similar or maybe exactly the same as the 5RH Pro. I can't verify that because Baofeng has a very weird naming scheme with uh, this radius and I am not quite sure if they are indeed the same radio inside. Maybe it's just a naming thing for different radios. Baofeng is used in doing that, but I can't confirm it. Still, they have the same firmware, if uh, that means anything. And the units that we received, the ones that we bought, the 5RM Plus GPS back in the day, were version 1 firmware. Uh, I think the latest one was 104 with hardware version if I remember correctly it was one now when I made that video which was quite popular I have to say I presented the method of how to unlock the 5RM plus GPS to write any frequency that you want in your zones in the bands of the radio like urban frequencies and I had uh, uploaded also a file that was this XLC save file of the CPS that had the unlock frequencies already inside so you could write your own and pass your own frequencies to the radio. Since then the firmware that is offered for this radio has gone up to 2009. From what I know this firmware was offered for 5RH Pro GPS but Baofeng sent it to me also for the 5RM Plus GPS. So Obviously, I passed it in the radio, and today I'm going to show you how this is done. It has some quirks, and uh, also I will upload the new unlock file for this firmware that has most of the frequencies now available for you to rebuild your save file and pass back to the radio. Now, before I proceed in showing you how to pass this new firmware and the unlock file. I would like to give a warning that you do this at your own risk. I'm sorry, but I am not responsible if you break your radios. I will do this live here now in the video, but I am not responsible if something goes wrong and your radio is ruined. I don't believe it will be, but just keep in mind that you do this at your own risk. If you want to proceed to update to the new firmware, it's fine. If you want to stay to the old firmware, it's fine again. And I have to say this, that this new firmware has some things that I believe they are buggy. Uh, the big addition to this firmware is the APRS section. We're going to see it in the CPS in a while. They have updated the APRS section uh, quite a lot, I would say. I think it's the first time that I see a Baofeng radio with such extensive APRS capabilities. And uh, it's one thing that if you're really interested in that, all those APRS capabilities, then you should go for this firmware. Okay, so as you can see on the side here, I have a live feed of the radio and now I'm going to do the firmware upgrade. All the files that you will need to do this will be in the description of the video. Okay, the firmware files, the program that will pass the new firmware to your radio and also the save file with the unlocked frequencies. Once more, you do this at your own risk. Okay, here is the firmware tool that you will find in the description of the video and all those here are older firmware files. This is the one that we're going to pass, 209. As you can see, the file here says BF5RH. So, obviously it was intended for the 5RH series and I think that this radio belongs to that series. And here are the older files, like the 1104 that my radio came with, at least. And doesn't have, of course, those extensive APRS capabilities. So let's see how this works. I'm going to turn off the radio here. OK. Please follow those steps as I do. We have the firmware tool. Now, in my radio, I didn't have to select this option that says old hardware. 
you have to try in your radio to see which option works. For me, this option should be unchecked. If you don't succeed to pass the firmware with this option off, then you can turn it on and see what happens. From here, you can select the port that your radio is connected. Mine is at COM7. Okay, and you open the firmware file. So we will select the 209. Okay, and now back to the radio. We have to press all three of the side buttons, the two side buttons and the PTT. Keep them pressed and turn on the radio. And if we succeed, the screen will be blank. That's a normal thing. If you have pressed correctly the three buttons and turn on the radio, it goes into the firmware update mode and the screen is blank. So, now we have opened the firmware file here and we are going to press this button here that says right. As you can see, the firmware is passing to the radio and updating it. We don't see anything in the screen of the radio. It's a blank screen. Okay, and it's complete. Now we close this firmware tool and also shut down the radio and reopen it. Nice. So, before we proceed now, we have to pass the new fonts for this firmware. There's another folder in the file that you will download that says font tool. You will open this tool, it's similar to the firmware tool. Again, you have to select the COM port, so watch out down here if, you're, if the correct port is not selected. We're going to open the font file, which is a font.txt file in the previous directory. And we're going to write that back to the radio. As you can see on the screen, the radio now is showing the update screen. Very nice, and this is done. So now the new firmware 2009 has passed to the radio, and we can confirm this if we go to the menu. We have to go radio info, versions, and as you can see here, it says firmware version 2009 and hardware version 104. We go back. Now, something to keep in mind, this firmware is not compatible with older versions of the CPS. You have to use a new CPS that is, that is updated to work with this firmware. So also the save files are not compatible with this new firmware. You will also find this new CPS file in the description of the video. The version is 1021. And let's have a look here because this is something very important. Here is the version again, 121. Okay, now something very important. After you do the upgrade to this firmware and you reopen your radio and the screen is blank, don't panic. It's something that happened because of the firmware upgrade. 
I have to say that whoever wrote this firmware for Baofeng hasn't done a very good job. The screen brightness is all messed up for this firmware, at least in the 5RM plus GPS radio that I have. This also is written in the official instructions of upgrading to this firmware. So, you pass the new firmware, you open your radio, the screen is black, you see nothing, don't worry, open the new CPS, like here, and do a read of the radio, I will show you why. Okay, and then go here to settings, open the settings and here you see a setting that says tone level. This has nothing to do with tone level, it's the brightness. And not only it's the brightness of the screen, it's backwards, meaning that you might see a 5 here, which is a black screen actually, it's zero level of brightness. That's why I said I don't know who wrote this firmware, but really they could do a better job. I mean, a five-year-old could do a better job in that. Anyway, so if you see a black screen after updating to this firmware, go to this setting over here, set it to one, and go back and write those settings to the radio. I will do another demonstration just to show you what I mean. I will put this to 5, which means zero brightness on the screen, and I will write it back to the radio. You can see on the side the live feed of the radio. As you see, the screen is blank now. I see absolutely nothing. It reopens, but when I press a key, it will go dark. It totally messed up thing in the firmware. Anyway, so I will set this back to 1, write the settings back to the radio, and now the screen is operating normally. And if I press a key, it works. That's the first thing that I had to say about the CPS and the new firmware. Before continuing to the unlocked file of all the frequencies, let's see the APRS section. As you can see, everything has changed here. If you remember the old CPS, it had almost nothing of those. Uh, these are new settings. Uh, you have to get your own settings here to work. For instance, here we have transmit intervals. Here you have to put the frequency that the APRS data will be transmitted to. A lot of other settings here, I haven't explored them all to say the truth. I just tested the positioning, the APRS positioning to be sent to APRS.fi, the website, and this works like this. Uh, you have to put here target as wide 1, dash 1, here you will put your call sign of course, and down here you will put wide 2, dash 1, that 6 is wrong. Okay. Again, your call sign at the RX call sign information. Of course, you have to choose an icon like a moving person here. It's those two symbols, the slash and the bracket. And uh, let me pass that back to the radio. Okay, uh, also we have uh, here APRS text, I guess it's used for APRS messaging. I have to test it and report back, I guess. But this is for APRS messaging. So Baofeng here made a totally new APRS control center for this radio or for the 5RH Pro. Now, I have to say that unfortunately the old save files of older versions of the CPS are not compatible with this version and also with the new firmware. So you can't pass the frequencies from your old save files to the new firmware. You have to pass them again by hand, unfortunately. I'm sorry, uh, Baofeng should make a better use of this or this radio should be compatible with CHIRP, I always 
say that to my videos and I will keep saying it. Okay, now before I close this video, the one thing that I know some of you guys are waiting for is the hacked save file for the version 2009 firmware that opens lower frequencies in receiving and other bands like airband and stuff. You will find of course this file again in the description of the video for you to download and as you can see here are the frequencies that are now open in receiving and transmitting. We go down to 18 MHz although believe me there's no point to go down there but anyway now you can go to your banks and your zones and enter for instance airband right so that's it we can pass it back to the radio now Perfect. That's it for the new firmware 2009. Again, at your own risk. If you like it, use it. It has some problems, especially with the brightness and the screen. Uh, it doesn't work as it should. I also think that the backlight off timer doesn't work as it should, but I haven't confirmed it. Definitely the brightness of the screen is a point that maybe Baofeng should go ahead and fix at some point because it's a very nice radio and it's really a pity to not work uh, as it should, as intended. So watch out for the brightness of the screen which in the CPS is referred as tone level. Set it to 1 to the new firmware in case you have a black screen. It counts backwards. Test the new save file with the unlocked frequencies, report back to the comments if you like, subscribe to the channel, like the video and see you next time.